when I see this picture of Krishna giving a hug to Gopadma, I feel that my life has the destiny. What to do, what to do, what to do. Where to go, where to go, where to go. Really? That's where we want to go? When Krishna hugs Gopakuma and where the devotees are surrounding him in diversity, sweet, 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 sweet leelas. Everything belongs to Krishna. Krishna is the Lord of everyone. He is the enchant of the gopis. He is the beloved of his coward boys. He is the heart and soul of Yashoda and Nanda and all the elderly gopis. He is the uh, uh, witty guy who can make cuts, cut jokes with anybody, like uh, making really life pleasant. Because, you know, even in Goloka Vendam, they cut a lot of jokes. So, mm, and uh, yeah, it, it, sometimes in the scriptures you hear stories how the gopis are making jokes on Krishna and Krishna jokes on the gopis and the gopas on the gopis. I mean, you know, this, this thing of making jokes on the opposite sex, you know, this is... Um, uh, it's a kind of a universal thing, it even, even happens in Goloka, in <laughs> And so Krishna is in the heart and soul of everybody, he is the beloved of everybody. In the, in the final stage of the Goloka Vindam, there's no competition of any uh, inappropriate way. Wherever, for all those who are representing the department of competition, they'll send to the material world. They, they can play the role of a demon if they want to. Uh, but definitely Goloka Vendavan doesn't open the doors to those who uh, disagree with the divine setup of Goloka. And well, that's a very elevated setup because it's a setup by God. You can call it the role model of, of divine society. Now, how it exactly works in all the nitty gritty details? I guess only pure devotees who, who have been there and came from there who can tell you more about that. But it's it, for, to me, it's just a, a most amazing and most desirable thing. Goloka Vendavan is a very desirable place. Now, we all desire to go to a place where we are not cheated. We all desire to go to a place where love is uh, consideration number one. Uh, we all uh, de like to go a place where even births, old age, disease, and death are not really disturbances. Births, old age, disease, and death. Well, in the eternal world, they don't exist really, you know. There's no birth, there's no death. So how does it work? Again, you cannot understand it, you know. It's like the eternal, it's eternal soul. We are eternal soul. We are not five years, 15 years, 25, 60, 80. We are not. But these, these are different stages which uh, we are going through and we say, oh, I'm already 60, oh, I'm an old man. No, no. I mean, I'm not an old man and I'm not 60. It's just simply something that you think it like that because you look at the mirror and you don't look at the soul. And, and you get this, this kind of an idea, you know. In, even further, you say, oh, I'm male, I'm male. What kind of male you are? You're just a, a compound of hormones and karmas. And now you think you're male, and another lifetime you thought you're female, and it's neither one nor the other. You're a spirit soul, and the spirit soul has a different type of constitution. Now, we hear that the constitution of the soul in Goloka Vendam basically is of the female nature, and thus female nature, we may call it, we may call it the female nature is, is like a gopi, gopi form that actually we are all be before God like his assistants. His, him pleasure giving assistance, that, that's the Purusha and Prakriti principle. The female gives pleasure to the male. So the, 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 the principle of male and female no, is, is, uh, is kind of a taking and given, or, or let's say a, a predominant and predominated. So somehow this predomination and predominate, but it's a, it's a very funny thing, you know. It's uh, it, it, it's symbolic if you want to say so, by the uh, by the male male female yin yang principle. There's always uh, there. Uh, 
there's a, a great cult in ancient cultures towards the fertility, because fertility means life-giving. So the, the whole process of, of this is, is sacred, you know, and as sacred as it, as it is, as important as it is, it is also uh, part of the divine. So how does it work in the spiritual world? How people get born in the spiritual world? You know, Gopakumai, you just reached that brief Bhagavatamita says. No? There's no, no description that he took birth in Goloka. So the entry to this world doesn't seem necessarily by being born there, but this is something, yeah, it's, it's the divine realm, yeah, so we don't, we don't really bother. We don't really demand detailed description on how the, the everything works there. We just know we have consciousness and we love to have divine consciousness. And Goloka Vendaman is the realm of divine consciousness, so divine things happen in the realm of divine consciousness and the meeting takes place. And when Gopa, Kumar and Krishna meet each other, they hug each other, and as a matter of fact, they lose, they pass out, because somehow other the the arrival of Gopakuma has made Krishna feel so ecstatic, so ecstatic that he, in that moment, he cannot contain himself. I mean, if Krishna passes out, that means, can you imagine the Supreme Lord passes out? How much emotion, how much, I mean, we're not talking about an, an unhappy uh, thing. We're talking about the most happy thing. Oh, my beloved is coming. Oh, pass out. I mean, for somebody passing out, you know, it must be an amazing emotion. So the God has such an emotion that he passes out when a beloved devotee reaches there. Hey, why are you waiting? Why are you not going? Don't you want to make God happy? <laughs> you want him to suffer your separation for such a long time and you still stay in this material world and you still make efforts to, to take another drug, to, to drink another beer, to have another time sex life, or whatever you come up with is, as entertaining to yourself. Uh, and you forget the Lord is waiting for you with such an anxiousness that when you can reach there, he'll, he'll be so overjoyed, he, he, he'll even forget himself and passes out. <laughs> I mean, my mother hasn't seen me in a long time when I finally reach home and give her a hug. It's very sweet for me, it's very sweet for her, but neither do I nor she passes out in the ecstasy. I don't think I don't think that any of our mothers and fathers have passed out in the ecstasy of seeing their child. But Krishna passes out and Gopakuma, they both pass out when they meet each other and finally No. No. No, this is my Lord. And what happens when Gopakuma passes out? The other coward boys come here and they push him. Hey, hey, wake up. Wake up. What are you doing? You think you come here to give trouble to Krishna? Look, Krishna, Krishna pass out. You, you, you're supposed to come and do something good here. Oh, Krishna, 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 Krishna. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Oh, Krishna comes back to his senses, no? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a rough, rough, rough play there, you know. Nobody can give trouble to Krishna, no? Mm -hmm. But the emotion which Krishna feels, that unbelievable emotion, that that is, uh, yeah, that is that is Krishna. He loves everybody, so he has emotion. We also have some emotion, but not so much. Like I'm very happy about you being here in class, but I can't cry about those who didn't come for class. I mean, I wish I could, no, but I'd be crying all day. So, in a sense, I. I'm protected from, from that, uh, from that cry about those who are not here, who are not participating, who are not uh, conscious. No. So Krishna has created us in a particular way that we can be part of his, his great family. But here we are in Bulgaria, we are in a, uh, in a conditional world. We are trying to figure out <laughs> What to do to preach Krishna consciousness here? How to use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, na? What Mahavishnu can do here? What Giridhari can do here? 
the Rasa study can do here, how we can get this temple going, how we can... I mean, this temple, for example, is a very, very nice location. How much rent do we pay here? 300 euros per month. 300 euros? 300. Yeah, 300 euros per month for this floor and the upper floor. So there are also accommodate... No. What is that? The bills are separate. I mean, electricity, water, heating, they are separate. Bills. We are buying, paying 300 euros for the two floors. Yes. 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 It's, it's so cheap. Yes. Uh, it's cheaper than the flats. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe so. for flats you can take one floor for that price. Mm -hmm. But that's because this doesn't look very much like an apartment. That yeah, but that, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. That is just mental, my dear. This is the much better place than any apartment you can find. It's fantastic, it has two bathrooms. If you can buy this, if you can rent this for 300 euros, yes, it's yes. so cheap. You don't want to buy this, because the buying price will be much higher. The renting price is really, is really good. So, so this is what you, like your flat where you're living in now. Uh, how, much, how much you pay mortgage? Well, I'm not sure. I you should to, be sure to to <laughs> to, to pay the, the she had the three mortgages actually that were very expensive two of no, them. No, no, no. Just calculate. What is your monthly expenditure for the to have a, the the flat? Now it's not too much. Probably like mm -hmm. one hundred euro. Or, uh, you only pay one hundred. Sure. That means the, the apartment is almost paid off. Okay. What what's the monthly expense on your on your flat? You mean for the bills, electricity? Yeah, no, if it was, was for rent. Uh, approximately 250 euros per month. So, 250 euros for two little yes. rooms. Yeah. Here you got for, for, for 300 euros, you got a temp room, a yoga room, several extra rooms. Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. Rent something big and do something there. Make it sensible and make something there. Don't spend your money and your time in the silly flats. Can you imagine? For the same amount you have a flat, I'm having a culture center. Now you just have to think how to do or what to do there, you know. But I think the flat business is a big cheating business. It's just, it, they are, they, they're, they're giving much too much... Uh, what I mean to say is that they just have a system to take all the money from the people. By this, you have to live in a city, you have to live in a flat. It's the way to control. Mm -hmm. The way to control them is to take their money. Yeah. yeah, this is perfect for temple, and we can live in temple. But what I'm saying that it's cheap because the the normal, let's say, normal people, uh, they do, they they are not very eager to live in a place like this that doesn't look like a normal apartment. Yeah, that's the mental stupidity. I mean, if you wanted to make, if you wanted to make just this part here, it's, it's more convenient flat than most of the flats I've seen. It's like fashion. This is, for example, if you rent this place, or like this, you could have a kita for your children downstairs and live in the flat upstairs and everything would be just perfect and your child would be in an environment you could hire another person who helps with the kids then your wife could be working upstairs on a computer doing things sometimes going down to see the kid and then you have a whole operation and if you do that like a you hire a psychologist you may even have like with with uh, uh, with children with special care ne necessary, no? and play with them all day, make them happy, and charge something. You get more money for that than the whole rent pays. You pay your own rent. The good thing here is that nobody actually lives in that building. It's used only for offices. Yeah, you have to find the place. That <laughs> you have to <laughs> find the place that yeah. suits you. That's all. But commercial spaces are usually more easily available than flats. Mm -hmm. Or flats are at a certain value. That's all. That's my point I make. Like, 
Satvika has a flying classroom. This is a very nice spot, and she immediately turns it into this. And why do the city like this could have hundreds of places like Satvika? In the world of capitalism, you make one formula and then you repeat it. No? You worked out one formula, it works, then immediately you repeat it in other places. That's why you have all so many chains. Chains of this shop, chains of that shop. It's like a formula. They, they call it, uh, uh, what do you call it? Franchise. They call it the franchise. As a matter of fact, people sell you the rights to use a franchise. Mm. I mean, we can also have our franchises. Just, just my mind is not a business mind. My mind is an art mind. I want to see things beautiful and want to see, but you know, it's. I, I can see it's not very difficult to do something and have a nice franchise. And and the best example of franchises uh, are actually the Anthroposophic Society. The Anthroposophic Society, Rudolf Steiner. They have many. Fr they have the Waldorf franchise. They have the uh, bio shop franchise. They have the taking care for the elderly franchise. They have the taking care of the special necessary special education people. They have franchise. They have taken things which are not very popular. People are not really eager to take care of these, no? They have accepted them and they have been become good in do in what do, doing what they're doing and and therefore I don't know in Bulgaria but in in Germany, Switzerland, France, they have so many establishments. And it, it is, they're actually good people. They Like for, for example, the Waldorf School, it demands on the parents to be par actively participating. If you're not actively participating, they say, we don't want your child. If you're not coming here and showing your care for the education, like how many people sent their children to a good school, but when the children go home, they find a real disaster at home. They give money, but they don't give any further. <coughs> For example, Waldorf School in many places, don't accept your child if you have a TV at home. Yes, that those are standards. So in this way, if you want to accomplish certain things, you have to make a certain investment. So I think as far as, mm -hmm. and don't forget, the, the, the Rudolf Steiner people, they started their work while Germany was going through fascism and Hitlerism and all this thing. And in the midst of that, they sustained their contribution. Unfortunately, they are not strict vegetarians. If they would be, they would be like the best group. <laughs> The best group, but some of the Waldorf schools are vegetarian now. They they're getting it. They're, they're getting it that it's pro progressive to be vegetarian. But according to Steiner, you're not strictly vegetarian. I don't know if Steiner was vegetarian himself. Check it out on that. He he may have been he may have been vegetarian, but. But the anthroposophs are not. They're, they're institutions. Of course, the institutions have been working with governments. No? They get government support to get money like anything because they take care of people, you know? Now, if you look to the Christian churches, now what have, have they done? They have taken the schools, all the schools they had in their grip. They have taken the hospitals, all in their grip. They have taken the orphanages, all in their grip. They have taken the uh, there's so many other things. They have taken the cemeteries. All the cemeteries are Christian controlled. No? So, so, so in this way, you can see, no? they have also institutionalized their power in the society to have very strong social services, which are of need. That is why many people say nowadays they're Christian because they're in the social system of these people, even though they don't believe anything the church says. 
because it's too contradictory, but they still believe in a system which culturally supplies them with an uh, uh, institutional infrastructure. Like if we are Hare Krishnas here, very nice, we are happy, but the moment somebody really becomes uh, uh, sick, he has to go to uh, St. Francis Mercy Clinic and says, dear, dear Christian brothers, could you please look after my body? <laughs> uh, so in this way, it's a, it's a service also. And the bodies have become, have to become expert to render service to society in whatever specific faculty they have. And oida therapy is one of them. Uh, World conscious pact is different. That is a social movement, a social uprising for protecting Mother Earth. But inbound yoga school, for example, or the Utsav also, they are truly providing for for us to create a network of social service, social educational service, etc. Let's see what comes from that. It's a big amount of work. It's a lot, a lot to do. I don't know how far I'm going to get in this lifetime. I hope others will take it further, but uh, it's 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 a task. And this type of task is what we like to do because my spiritual master, he created such a big task in this regard. He, did, he, he created the International Society for Krishna Consciousness and that provided big amount of service and is still providing in India lots of uh, different things. People are coming to Krishna Consciousness by the developments. And And of course, because it became so big and so institutionalized, and we don't agree, we don't agree uh, with many of the things, how they're managed, etc., etc. But I tell you, if I would be in the street now somewhere and don't know what to do, I mean, I'd probably join an ISKCON temple because at least they have a, a spiritual environment and good good healthy food and service for which makes sense no i i wouldn't i wouldn't think of of joining the mormon church or or, or i mean because i believe in krishna of course that's the main reason no but uh, because to start your own mission to start your own temple well, that required lots of faith and lots of energy practically you have to well, now we're going to take breakfast because it's t 10 past 9 and I think at 10 we have to be in that park. I'm not trying, I'll call Satika now. Yes, call her. I think it's 10 She said 10 see, yesterday. So we want to be on, on time. <coughs> Anyhow, yeah, I just reflected upon you, with you a little bit, finding your space in society. And us as devotees, finding our space, like in Sweden, we haven't found our space. Half, half, no. Maha. Maha Hari, he has a great farm, but has no time to farm. It's too small for a commercial farm. Then he has a shop, a, a restaurant. It's nice, but you're not allowed to cook. So he has to make some half-baked situation there, which is always frustrating, but he manages even to sleep down there, you know like sleeping in the place you work. But it's good for preaching, he can preach there, he can make new contacts, but he's not fully satisfied. Nor will anybody pay him the money he invested there so he could get out and get his money back, so he's stuck with it. No? So we, we haven't really found our place in society very much, you know. And we have to, we have to find our place. And Krishna consciousness helps a lot, like Sankitan. With Sankitan, you can survive immediately and you can go tomorrow to Plopdiv and next day to Karjali and, and survive because you're selling something. And I mean, look at those books which we have, the, the Walter Eilitz book. I'd love to sell them. I mean, I love to sell Prabhupada's books also, but in a way I feel that these books is a much better more introductory book. Uh, I mean, you never know. Somebody gets a Bhagavad Gita, he may turn to uh, become a devotee right there. But somebody may also become a devotee from reading the Walter Highlands book. So, but it's more easy reading. 
people say, oh, well, what happened there? And where? Oh, and these people are here. These people have a center in here in Sofia. I want to meet them. Because Walter well, Eilich wrote, read, wrote more books, no? After I read the, his first one, I got all the others and read them and they're very good reading material. So here we go. Here we go. Back to home, back to God. Eh? Come along, come along, don't waste your time. Uh, get ready now and do something sensible and useful. Don't be a guy like who works for years and years to finally buy a flat which is really not, not good for preaching. That just makes you upset with the neighbors. That's a waste of time and I mean, you guys, you guys are all powerful guys, and you are, I mean, you can work in, in AHP. You, I know what that means. It means you are a high power employee type. Because they don't work with 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 people who who, who don't know what they know what they do, who do not know what they're doing. So if you can manage such a position in such a uh, in such a, you can also be the generating force in something like in whole. Just you need what what you need probably is more entrepreneur spirit, a little bit more bold and not taking big risk, but going into the line of Krishna and the spiritual master, but. Do we have an entrepreneur spirit? And then we can do small things. We don't look for the big institution. Those people come to me, they look for the big institution. Usually they want to get a, a job in it and maybe, who knows, maybe have a simple, have an easy life on it, but it's not like that. Krishna conscience doesn't supply that. And if it supplies, then it's not Krishna conscious. Because if you're there for the money, if you're in the temple for the money you make, then, then you're not a devotee, then you're just a fruit of work. At the same time, devotees also need money. So they, they, they do yoga, they do this, they, 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 they do. I mean, how do we maintain our temples? You know, we maintain temples in places there is no Sankirtan, there's small cities. You can't go out every day uh, with, with five people selling books. People go tired of you. Because if, 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 if a devotee approaches you every day and wants to sell your book, then after a while you say, you know, I already got it. Could you leave me alone? <laughs> huh? Of course, in a, in a city of millions of people, you can do it. You can, like, I just got a report from our Sankitan party of eight, 18 Sankitan devotees, and they, uh, they, I don't know what period they reported, but they just, they reported that they have sold in the last period 600,000 books, and they're nice books, and, and they are doing Sankitan in, in the Transmillennium in Bogota, which is like a subway, but on the surface, and they let them do it. Because actually, officially, it's permitted to sell anything in that system. Can you imagine doing Sankit on the metro in Stockholm? If they let you do it, you'd be selling books like hotcakes. Huh? I did, I did Sankit on in the subs in a subway system in London. It was totally prohibited. That was great. We were collecting lots of luxury. We would go around with a bucket. Pitching the donation for our temple. Huh? Everybody threw in a coin. You had a bucket full of coins at the end of the day. Mm. <clears throat> and there's excitements, like in Mexico. We, Mexico City is a very strange city because it's built on, an, on a lake. There was a lake before. And now there is a big part of Mexico City. It's, it's like 3,000 islands in the middle of the city, you know, with channels in between. That's what's left of the big lake from before. And, and, you, and 
now the channels are like kind of touristic, so they have these beautiful boats going like in Venice, Vene, uh, Venezia. And you can rent one of those islands and just make a little temple out there in the in the nature, totally far out, no? Uh, much more beautiful than Vene, Venezia. Hmm. But it's like this, life is full of opportunities. Just have to just grab them and do them and do something and be humble about it because it doesn't necessarily work very well. But it will work if you work hard because our work depends on Im impacting upon people that we are there to serve them. So everybody wants to be served. Served a nice dish, served a nice yoga class, served a nice lecture, served a nice uh, a drawing or a book. It's all service. We are offering our service and our service is not mundane. Our service is spiritual. So all in this, all, all this, we have together, have to get going for our morning 